Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Ross here from Porky's Corner. The biggest gob in sport. We say the things on here that nobody dares say. We're just waiting for Terry to uh, log on before we do a Saturday morning roast. Terry and Pork is Saturday morning roast. How are you doing, Terry? You all right, mate? Um, knackered. A uh, lot, lot of boxing in the last, in the last probably ten days or so. So we had our club show on the fourteenth, um, and then obviously the fallout from that. Then it was the London finals last night, and obviously trying to keep a tab of what's happening on the old Queensbury show as well. And then today, got another show in about four hours. Yeah. And that's just a university show, but there's a couple of kids I'm gonna go and see up there as well. Whew. Yeah, man, it's been it's been I haven't had it this busy boxing wise for a while, so it feels good. Yeah, but you buzzing, aren't you? Because you're uh, quite up on all that amateur scene, aren't you? Ray, Ray. No, nah, well, oh, aren't you? I prefer it to the pros, to be honest with you, mate. Because there's a there's this degree more honesty, stuff happens. Do you know what I mean? Like stuff happens. If two people need to fight, they fight. You ain't waiting seven years. Yeah, I see what you mean there. Uh... But I will say this though, Russ. I'm yeah. going to put a smile on my face. We we boxed a kid from West Ham on our show, and it was a shame that like, Russ Gerrard wasn't in the other corner because oh, no, Russ like... Gerrard's team West Ham. If you're blocking me in half, it'll say West Ham. Yeah, well, they're not happy that their lad lost to us, and like they they haven't let it go, man. And we're like, guys, it's boxing, man. You win some, you lose some. You know, all these messages demanding rematches and whatnot. They 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 they, they took that defeat badly. Cause the lad that beat their lad, Gary, Gary's only been in the gym about five months. Like we haven't had him that long. Like we we haven't got him to where we want to get him. And when we do that, oof, people are going to sleep, Porky. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. He's I got can... them Liam Cameron hands. Mm. Yeah, Liam fights tomorrow night. Liam fights tonight. So tonight, sorry, sorry, tonight, yeah, it's Saturday tonight, and he just got weighed yesterday, though. So yeah, he fights tonight, Liam. Yeah, you're not going to go down. No, I'm, I'm up to eyes in it tonight. I'm going to Lincolnshire in a minute. I've got some on which channel, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, a good show. To be fair, we do get yeah, some stick, but that's not a bad show tonight, is it? I think it's a good card. Um, um, I think we're going to find out a lot about Dalton Smith tonight. I think he comes through this. I think Dalton wins. Um, I think it'll be easier than people are saying. I think I think Zapata's probably seen his best days, and I think I Dalton's hitting his peak. All that about Eddie saying it's a 50-50 and his bum squeaking. It's just the same old format that they use every every fight now, isn't it? Really, it is. But but do you know what? You know this, Russ. He could get every, beat though, couldn't he, Smith? Every one of those boxers can just roll back the years like that. Maybe this is the one camp that went well and it's that last hurrah and all the adrenaline and all the kind of neurochemicals and all that sort of stuff is all in the right place and bam, Zabeda comes out fighting and maybe he catches Dalton early and then, you know, it's a bit of a war. But there's a lot of if, buts and maybes in that. When you really look at it, you got Dalton Smith who doesn't cut corners and he's in the prime of his boxing life. Against the guy that's seen better days and not coming off many wins, do you know what I mean? So Dalton should win, but him winning shouldn't diminish what that means. That means that he's at that fringe world level now. Yeah. Do you think the uh, Sapida could end up doing a uh, a Mickey Ward? Uh, sorry, do you think uh, this fight, Sapida against Dalton Smith's a bit like Mickey Ward against that Emmanuel Augusto. Do you think it's one of them? Where Emmanuel, no. Emmanuel Augusto's like Dalton Smith and Mickey Ward's like Sapida. Do you think it's a bit like that across road? No, I, I think Dalton's a bit more workmanlike. I think he's just Dalton's a fundamentally sound boxer who, if he catches you, can put you over. Um, disciplined, sharp. There's a lot to like about about Dalton Smith as far as I'm concerned. I think he's he's the guy we should get behind because if he can show that he's at that level, then we've got another guy we can look forward to watching in big events. I know trained Dalton as a kid, our good friend. 
Chris Smedley. Dennis. Chris Smedley trained him, didn't he, as a kid? Yeah, because they were all at Steel City together, weren't they? Well, Chris started Steel City, Chris Smedley, didn't he? And then under, did he under, start or did they start together? No, Chris started it on his own, the gym, tiled it all, and then he gave it up, didn't he, after a while? After a, a, I'm not sure how long exactly, but... And Grant Smith took it on. He's done well anyway, Grant. You have to give him credit. Yeah. Uh, it's it's You'd say it's the leading Sheffield gym now. At well, the moment, it is, it is. you'd say it's it's a bigger gym. Uh, not a bigger gym or well-known, but it's the more competitive and successful gym. That, that, that It's the most successful gym at the moment. That's what you say. In terms of producing champions, it's probably yeah. just ahead of SBC at the moment. But these things go in cycles. So, Still, City are having their moment now, and then when you yeah. focus on your top guys, you tend to lose the the younger talent, and then they'll go to SBC. Then they'll become really good, and then who's Still SBC? City will a Sheffield Boxing Centre. Oh, Glynn's. Yeah. Yeah, Glenn Road. Yeah, yeah, Glynn's. Uh, well, I mean, there's T and Scott up there. He's they reckon he's going to be the next big thing, you know. He's doing all right in the Ams. Um, you know, he's he's. He's got something. You're the guy that put me on to him. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. I've seen him spar. I've seen him train. When he was 15. Was he like 15 or something? You're like, yeah, 15, this is the next kid. He was like, uh, he's a lump. He was a lump at 15, Tim. But he's got, yeah. that, he's got that similar attitude to Chris Burns, you know, who comes on my sort of channel. Bit naive, yeah. bit rough around edges, bit raw kind of thing. But he's an hard, hard, hard trainer kind of thing. From what Glenn would tell him, he's a great hard trainer. Um. He's sparring Ben Whitaker now, so he must be doing all right. Yeah, yeah, it's a good level to be operating at. So that's good. Uh, Quinn Quinn Ahmed won the other night. Who Kevin uh, backs? You know, Chris Medley's kid. He's he's ready to go pro. Uh, he's got an opportunity to train at EIS. Uh, Quinn, what so, weight is he? Uh, I think he's about Dalton Smith's weight. That's about sixty-four. Something like that, 63, 64, yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. And, but he's not doing the NACs this year, is he? So he's not doing the ABAs this year, is he? No, no, I don't think so. But Chris said he's going to put him in an elite championship at some point this year, I think, but I don't know which well, one. Well, it would have to happen now, because it's happening now, yeah, Russ. Well, that'll be this season gone then, won't it, from this this year, won't it? Yeah, because cause like, like the lads I used to train, they've just all come out the London's last what's night. That, what, what's that one that uh, Mick Hennessy and Andy Ayling go to every year? That uh, It's like a pilgrimage. That one you'll go to? Is it Haringey? Haringey. Uh, it's not what it used to be, though. The um, box it's club. Not, yeah. Yeah. Well, that used to be the main place for them all, didn't it, to sign people, didn't it, back in the day? Yes and no. So... you. It's one of those things, right? So when the when the competitor list comes out, you'll find out whether it's worth going or not. And so some years are really good. So if you take 2015 for example, 2015 was was class, man. You had uh, who was there that year? Ben Whitaker was the standout guy that year. You had Kelly Harrington making a statement. That's before she went on to win a gold medal at the Olympics. Uh, yeah, people like Shannon Courtney, there, Raven Chapman. Yet it was really um, Harry Scarf, Kieran Conway, uh, James Metcalf might have been there as well. It was just stacked. Uh, Ryan Toms, Kyle, the no, Ryan Amos, sorry, Kyle Haywood. Um, loads of really talented kids in that one year. So, and you can see they've all kind of made their way in the pros now. Chris Congo was there as well. And then the other years where there's just nobody. So you have to be really careful which year it is. So you're always worth looking at the competitor list. I think this year, it might be good because the ABAs are quite early this year. So people will want that last tournament to see a, look, a few head-to-heads, which wouldn't normally happen otherwise. Mm. Yeah. Uh, rest at card tonight. Sandy Ryan against Terry Harper. The bookies have got Sandy Ryan favourite, haven't they? I find that strange. I, if you want to make some money tonight, I'd put money on Terry Harper. Oh, Terry Harper on points. Yeah, I would. It's uh, maybe Harper to stop. No, I don't know about stopping it because she's a runner, isn't she? When she's throwing a punch, she's going backwards, isn't she? I've never really seen her let him go yet. Have you? Yeah, but listen, man. You know, you know, she's been on the 
on this on the special diet recently, man. So let's hope oh, that's she looks as big she's the biggest woman I've ever seen for ten and a half stone. <laughs> she looks like Hercules. <laughs> well they're feeding them over there in Denneby. Um blue Still tablet. Pot noodles. <laughs> pot rice over there, isn't it? Because they go to own bargains, don't they? Uh, the rest of the car, sorry, the Sandy Ryan one, Terry Harper. We're going with I, Terry Harper on points, aren't we? Because she's uh, yeah. not engaging enough, is she? She's not there to be it. She's like on outside and then a little bit more. She's like, stays out of range, scores a job, and then got us on a bike, don't she? Because it's two minute rounds, isn't it? This is why I don't need- know if you can do that with Sandy because what people forget with Sandy, Sandy's quite long as well. So. So, so this could actually end up being one of those fights that is getting talked up. But when you watch it, you're like, just get stuck in. Or it may just turn out that they just think, forget it. Like, well, let's find out who the best is tonight. And they just go for it. Because uh, remember, there's that emotional thing where they know each other. Well, I heard Terry Harper say she's never having her teeth done like Sandy Ryan because she'd get hammered by locals in her area if she had them done. I can believe that because most people in Denham haven't got any teeth, so I respect her for that. But I'm I'm saying postcard postcode postcode, but about one mile away. And uh, but I'm you had yours done. Wait, 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 wait. But you had yours done. I have my I have mine done. Yeah, I'm afraid like, but nobody says up to me around there because I'll knock theirs out. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Terry can't get away with that because she can't handle a shot, can she? <laughs> and there's quite... <laughs> And people in Denneby are probably even harder than Terry. Even if they've not boxed, they'll still be harder. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to have any digging people out from Denneby. I'll end up with 30 people at my house here in flares in the next hour, killing, wanting to kill me. <laughs> when you go to Denneby, it's like going to Hazard County, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's one of those places It's just like 25 years behind everywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to Denneby, it's like, you know, you expect Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane pulling up with Boss Hogg. You know? And they all driving around in Vauxhall Cavalier hatchbacks. Vauxhall Beavers, mate. Vauxhall Beavers. Let's have it right. And Mark one for Granana's from Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope Terry wins tonight and flies the flag for DN12. But if she loses, she's running around saying she's not bothered because Steffi... Says that's still got the 154 belt, Teddy. If that gets beat tonight, it's a bit like Kell Brook against Golovkin. If Kell gets beat, he's still got his belt at 147. But who's she going to fight at 154? Well, there ain't nobody really, is there? Because the pools that, that, uh, uh, What's it called? The pool's that low, isn't it, really? Remember, they only went for that belt to fight Jonas, and Jonas ain't going to fight them. So the, the belt's kind of meaningless now because Tasha's come down to 147. So if Harper loses, her options for fighting Natasha Jonas are dead. Yeah, yeah, I see what... Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think that fight's ever really going to happen now because there's that much bad blood, Terry, isn't there, really, between Joe G and... Uh... You know, Steffi, isn't there really? There's, there's bad blood, isn't there? Bad blood between Joe and Steffi. Bad blood between Joe and Eddie. Joe and Eddie? God, they're never going to ever be friends, are they? Eddie tried to finish him, didn't he? Said to his yeah. fighters, look, leave Joe Gallagher or you're not going to get on any slots. I mean, that's basically trying to torpedo a man's livelihood, isn't it? Hey, look, dear, and Joe, and Joe came back like Michael Jordan, man. I mean, put the 23 on his back and said, let's go again. Yeah, like when Jordan came back. You remember that? Have you been watching The Last Dance? <laughs> no, I grew up through it, Russ, man. I was, I, listen, I was ruined when he retired, and then I was delighted when he came back. What, when he went to play baseball? Yeah. Were you in bits? I was ruined, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said to me the other day, Larry Bird better than... Uh... Michael Jordan. I says, what planet are you on, mate? That big stiff Larry Bird with that muzzy. Give your head a no. shake. No. Larry Bird. Look, Larry Bird's an all-time great, right? And Larry Bird is in that Magic Johnson conversation. He's in that Kobe Bryant conversation. Jordan's in a different conversation because the only reason we're talking about this is because of Michael Jordan. If there's no Michael Jordan, no one cares about basketball. You know what? I think you might just be right there, mate. 
I think you might yeah. be right there. Comparing Michael Jordan to Larry Bird, that's like comparing uh, Gary Pallister to Madonna, isn't it? Uh, Mar- Maradona, <laughs> isn't it? Or, or, or it's like comparing Ronaldo to David Beckham, and you're like, I get what people are saying, but you have to really understand that all of this modern football stuff is off the back of David Beckham. One fifty-three meter goal against Wimbledon, and David Beckham took football to a completely different level in terms of commercial appeal and just that mainstream appeal. Like, you know, when you like, I talk to these young boys in the gym about David Beckham, and I say, no one man had more impact on white working class men than David Beckham. David Beckham had white working class men wearing pink t-shirts. He had them with mohawks. He had them shaving eyebrows. He had them having cane rows. All sorts of mad shit that just Beckham did it. They did it. Nah, 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 nah. You can, that's why you, you can you can't compare many people to David Beckham because that guy, yeah, he he moved the needle in a way that I don't think anyone's done since in football. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And someone in your comments is going to say George Best, and I, I wasn't there for George, so I don't know. That could be true as well. I have a, I have an argument with Kevin every single day, right? He, he'll he'll come into my my office and he'll go, I've got an idea for a video, and I'll go, What's that? And he'll go, Just put a video out saying Muhammad Ali for everybody in the seventies, and today they don't do it. That's his video that he tells me to do all the time, and I'll and then I'll go, Oh yeah, yeah, I never thought of that. And then he'll start going on about how football is a great sport and that because he's ex football, isn't he? And so he get talking about football. Then he goes on about, yo, oh, get this upon your YouTube, get this here. And he'll go, watch Maradona here. Look at him hacking into him in 82 Cup in Spain, not World Cup. Look at him, he just gets up, don't complain. And there were bad tackles back then, weren't there? And the boots were oh. different, the ball were different, the pictures were different, weren't they? He says, could you imagine Maradona now? With all this tackling you can't do and balls that they can swerve and pitch, you'd be better than Messi. That's when he goes off on well, then he'll go back in his office after half an hour. But I agree with him about the football, do you? Um, I think greats would be greats in any era because if you look at what makes someone great, it's normally the fact that they've got their fundamentals nailed and they've learnt the fundamentals so well that they can just throw them out the window and go, I'm gonna take the sport to another level. Loads of those players, like I look back and I say, guys who would have been just as good in this era, guys like Rude Hullet would be good in this era. Um, Matt Letizia would be good in this era. Do you know what I mean? Georgie King Cladsey would be good in this era. Do you know what I mean? Like loads of those guys would just be good. Aspria would be good in this era. Jesus, even David no, Hurst would be good in this era. Do you know Aspria? Yeah. Who played for Newcastle? Yeah. Yeah, Colombian, isn't he? Yeah, look at Zola. Zola, Zola, you know what the way people talk about guys like De Bruyne and David Silva. I'm like, can you yeah. imagine Zola playing for Pep? Like a that's, peak Zola playing for Pep. Oh, it's game over. Last note to what we had a conversation about in, in factory the other day. He come in my office and he's like, hey, listen, could you imagine Eddie Gray and Billy Bremner in middle? <laughs> you know Eddie Gray who played for Leeds on left wing. Yeah. Could you imagine, Ed? Look at Eddie Gray there. Get that up, Tony. Get that video. Look at Eddie Gray there. That ball stuck to his left foot. <laughs> you know, back in the day, they had wingers, didn't they? Yeah. Chris yeah. Waddle was another one. Chris Waddle, yeah. Could you imagine him nowadays? What he, what would Gascoigne be worth now? You know, I always remember when I was a student, like Chris Waddle had a, he had a cafe on, oh, what's the, like Broom Hill in Sheffield, right? He had a cafe there. And you see him every morning. He'd be sat in that window with his newspaper and his coffee. We'd walk past going to lectures, just looking at Chris Waddle, just banging on that window. Go, hey! And he'd get pissed off. And I think back then, you're still playing for... It might have been Worksop you was playing for back then as well. It's like, he's nearly 40 Workshop, back then. Yeah, he used to play for Worksop, uh, Chris, Chrissy Waddle. Yeah. <clears throat> so there was... Because he had a place up there. Sean Bean had a fish and chip shop. I think it was Northern Soul he had. Or no, Broomhill Friary is one that Sean Bean had money in, if I remember correctly, as well. With, Sean Bean used to go with Dennis's sister, Denise, you know. I didn't know that. They were up on the same, same estate, didn't they? Yeah. Do you know Beanie? 
His old man's got a Rolls Royce and he still lives in a bought council house on the state. Drives a roller. See, that, that's as Sheffield as you can get, mate. It's a bit like Dennis's dad, isn't it? In the 60s and 70s when he were on a grander day. He had a roller and he was... And he used to park it outside Barbara's, you know, it, 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 not Dennis's mum, Dennis's stepmums. Yeah, they were yeah. like Bill Maynard with all parking tickets on Dashing Roller. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Some people you could take Sheffield out of them, but you can't you could take them out of Sheffield, but you can't take Sheffield outside inside them, can you? Ah, it's a special place, mate. Yeah, that's why right. uh Dennis's dad now, if he were if he was still here with us, half eleven now. He'd be in Bucky's now, up at Burley, after a breakfast. And then he'd be just coming out at Bucky's, what, 12 o'clock, to go to pub, Burley Hotel. He'd be sat there with all bets on the table and, and loads of people around him. He'd be there all day now. Talk boxing, talk boxing show at six. Then Dennis would send somebody up at six to go pick him up. So go get me dad, fetch him down to the show. He'd have been at it all day. If he was still there with us, bless him, all day. Bucky's at pub. And no matter what, no matter how much Dennis's dad used to earn, he would still do this. He'd have the same routine on a weekend, Terry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If it makes you happy, why change it? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's go back to this show then, because there is a, a couple of other good fights on here. We've spoke about the Terry Harper one and uh, Terry Harper's fighting, what they call it. Uh, Sandy Ryan, and we spoke about Sapida against Dalton Smith, but there's a, there's another, uh, there's a couple more decent fights, on not there? Ismail Davis against Troy Williamson, that's a good one, isn't it? That's a hell of a fight. Um, but they know each other, right? Like they they they've been sparring each other. Can't split them, Terry. On that, can you split them? You got well. Williamson's got to be the favorite on experience, right? Yeah, yeah. And and pedigree, let's be honest, and pedigree. Yeah. But Ishmael Davis brings that kind of wild card factor of, you know, has he got that freak power where he can sort of turn it in his favor? But, you know, has he caught Troy at the right time? All these sorts of things. But in these situations, you tend to back pedigree. But I wish Ishmael Davis all the best, man. Like he, he's a young man trying to turn his life around. And you know, like when you come from where he came from, uh, I think it's Chapel Town, mm. you're you're in a permanent cycle of just trying to do the right thing because, like, that part of Lee's can drag you down from what I've seen. Mm. The, so, Ismail Davis, I'm going to go with Troy Williamson myself on that. But it, that's a pick and fight. Dalton Smith one. I think Dalton wins that, but it's a decent fight. Sandy Ryan, Terry Harper's public fight at night. Isn't it? James Flint against Campbell, hands of foam. It's hands of foam going... Roll it dice. What's going on here? Or did they have to roll it because he's like 15, 14 and 0, isn't he now? I know that they, they've chosen the right guy. They know that there's not going to be a lot coming back. So Campbell Hatton's going to get a chance to work. I think Campbell stops him with a body shot and that'll be it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, sorry, James, James Joe Flint against. Him, what what do you, do you think Campbell wins? I think Campbell, yeah, I think Campbell drops him with body shots. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're gassing it up as a 50 50, aren't they? Well, they got they got a fight to sell. Yeah, they're not putting Campbell Hatton in 50 50s. If they were, they'd be calling out Adam as him. Yeah, yeah, it's and I, and of course, James Flint's just drawn Anna with that Adam Circa. But with a five and one, really, and he should have really, really done him, shouldn't he? 14 and 0, kid. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? So maybe Campbell Atten is the favourite. It's just that Campbell Atten's had that many gifts. He's had two gifts so far, or three, and he's been spoon fed that much for the other 11 fights he's got. The, the fact that Campbell Atten's going in there with a fight that's got a 30% chance of him losing. We've all lost a shit over it, haven't we? Do you think? Yeah, but remember, as long as he's Ricky Hatton's son, and as long as people buy into that, they're not going to let this kid lose. Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, yeah. Uh, I think that's about it, really. There's not really... Rest of the card's not really appealing to me. 
Liam Cameron, man. Like, oh, yeah. Liam Cameron, yeah, but after Liam's, after Liam's, it's a bit pony, isn't it? Liam's got that a tabby Annie to fight. Yeah, it's a shame <laughs> that they haven't they haven't put Liam on the televised bit because I think it's important that Liam Cameron's story is publicized, man. The fact that this that's one of the biggest injustices in sport. Yeah, but a man getting four years for cocaine. And you and get everybody trace else. amounts, as, as Dillian yeah. likes to say, and Connor likes to say, trace amounts. Trace amounts, yeah. Four year ban, and everybody else can't just man up and take this, can they? Yeah, it's lawyers, experts. You know, I, remember, I think it's you are saying that. What I would do right now, Russ, is I would actually just have a supplement company. Yeah. With contaminated supplements, right? And whenever someone fails the test. They just go to UK and say, yeah, I bought this product. And every time they test my product, they're going to find all this stuff in there. Yeah. Well, we're going to see And then that. everyone gets off. They go, oh, you're taking this again. Ah, oh, I didn't know. He's rebranded it. It's a different name to last time. Well, who you got? Who you going for? So you're going to go for uh, Campbell Atten on my stoppage then, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh... Eddie Hills is still shouting and bawling about Anthony Joshua. He's back. He's this, he's that. Terry, can we explain to fans at home that Joshua has just had four wins on trot, but none of them are really top 15 men, are they really? Look, whatever deal the zone have given Joshua, yeah, it's clearly sweet enough that he doesn't have to test himself. Yeah. Right. So, fair play to him. But let, let's be honest, Porky. Who do you want to see Joshua fight, really, apart from the winner of Rusek and Fury? No I'd one. like to see him fight the bar, me. But that's not based on merit, though, is it? Dubois not at Joshua's level. Yeah. Oh, no. Dubois isn't, no. In fact, you, the, you'd have to say at the moment, is Dubois scared of his own shadow, really, when somebody puts it on him? Because he tends to run out of ideas, doesn't he? <clears throat> I don't think it's a Dubois problem. I think it's a boxing problem, Russ. What happens when you get into camp is you're surrounded by five or six guys that are not as good as you. So you get to have your own way, right? So where you're doing all of this stuff, your your backhand's working a treat. Your left hook to the body's working well. Your right uppercut's working well. But these are lesser guys. So when you jump into the ring with guys who are better than you, and you're like, why isn't the stuff I was doing in camp working? You start to doubt yourself. Am I really that good? Is what they were saying in the media correct about me? And some people take that to heart. But you thought with Joshua. Once Ruiz said, ah, I'm going to stand in and fight with you. Joshua was like, oh, this isn't fair. And you saw Joshua start to regress mentally. In the same way with Usyk in that first fight. Once Usyk said, I'm not going anywhere, mate, and you're going to keep eating these shots, you saw Joshua regress mentally. Same thing in the second fight. It's very, very hard for a boxer to, to keep trying to excel when you haven't got people as good as you in your camp. That's why, if you notice, like Joseph Parker's done all right for himself because... He surrounded himself with guys like Fury. So he knew that he was going to get a hard time every time. Do you know what I mean? So it gives you an extra injection of hunger where you then get to fight people. You're like, oh, okay. This guy's not as scary as Tyson Fury. I should be okay here. Yeah. Well, well how, do you, how do you see this going here, this Usyk uh, Fury one, Terry? Because... I'm I'm going to be surprised if it even happens. Are you? So I think it will happen. Um, you and I have talked about this before. Yeah. The people that control this whole game need it to happen, right? They need it to happen. So whatever antidepressants, whatever mood-altering compounds they have to give Tyson Fury, they're going to give him. He's going to show up when he needs to show up and he's going to fight, he may win, he may not win, but they're going to make their money. And then we're on to the next chapter and the next chapter until these guys get their money. And that will be it. Mm. 
you know, it's going to be. Uh... And where do you see uh, Wilder's role in all this? Because they're saying Wilder's going to fight Zhang now, aren't they? This morning. <sighs> Until he gets rid of Malik Scott, I don't see how Wilder gets any better. Like, Wilder's thing was, he was hard to read. That's what kind of... If you look at guys like Ortiz um, and all those other people he's for, even Fury found Wilder hard to read. Right, That's what made him good, that Breland just let him be him. But Malik Scott's kind of taught him to be Malik Scott. And I don't care what Malik Scott's box rec says, he was a terrible heavyweight. And he's turning Wilder into a terrible heavyweight. You reckon? Sadly, yeah. Do you think Wilder's finished, Terry? Nah, I, I, I don't, because anytime he could just say, I want to do what I want to do, and then he could be, he'd be all right. But until he frees himself up and says, I just want to be that old gunslinger like I used to be, and then I don't see him winning. He's not going to win boxing conventionally. He's not built for that. He's built for, for, for just running and gunning. Yeah. There he is, isn't he? He's uh, Wilder doesn't look to me like he could win a chess match with anybody. You know but I mean? he never had to. It, it was always just the, I'm going to catch you at some point. Mm. Well, he can certainly punch, can't he? Yeah, but you but you got to let your hands go. Yeah. You can't be waiting for the perfect moment. Malik Scott will be talking about you want to do this, you want to set your feet, you want to bait. Shut up, man. Just shut up and let this guy just jump in the ring and have a row. Would right? you like That's to see Wilder with a UK trainer, Terry? No. Who who would be good enough? Don't say Mark Tibbs. I know he's your mate, but there's no one at that level, mate. That There's no one that would understand Wilder enough to to get the best out of him. Maybe like if, if he did a, a, a link up with David Hay at a push because obviously they've been in camp together. But outside of that, no. What about if you linked it with your Pop Pop Bang? Well, you. No, I'm not Pop Pop Bang, am I? That's John Fury. He's Pop Pop Bang. If he could, if he could link up with old Pop Pop, he might be able to show him a few tricks at the train. Yeah. Mate, you put, you put the videos out of him showing his tricks to the train. You know what I mean? You're the guy that went and found the damn video. <laughs> What of him fighting John Fury? Yeah, <laughs> me and Mickey Fio managed to get it off uh, Eric Guy. Eric Guy put, put him in. <laughs> oh, rest in peace, Eric Guy. Eric Guy said, "You what? I've got videos of Big John Fury. He can't fight him for Toffee." <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be. I'll give. I'll give uh, Big John Fury his uh, his Jews. It, it terrified everybody not to let them copies go. You know, nobody wanted to out them. But Eric won't bother. No, no, no. Eric, Eric was handy about enough. Him. He his... can't punch for toffee. He's, I'll give you yeah. that. Obviously, Eric didn't do it for now, and Mick had to grease his palm. But yeah, and since we obviously got them copies, everybody's stuck them out, haven't they? So, <laughs> now, if it, if it comes back to bite you in the arse, there's a couple going to come back and bite you in the arse, mate. Him. I'll, t I'll let you know when I see you in flesh. But when, when, when a few pop up, He'll have to crawl away, him old uh, Pinocchio. But he is funny. <laughs> he is funny. Hey, listen, do you know what they've had me doing this week in Factory? Fitness videos. You won't believe it, mate. I don't know if Kevin's just doing it. Porky's fitness. <laughs> Porky fitness video. I wish you were having a fucking laugh, aren't you? I'm not doing that. You are. You've lost all this weight and you look well. Get that camera on. Uh, I've dug my heels in all week. Even cut head off on interview I did so so it won't go out. They, they, they find ways around it, don't they, even Cameron? But we've had a bit of a giggle, but yeah, we did, I did a bit of a uh, did a bit, a bit of video. It's not going out yet. I don't even know if it is going to go out. I'm trying to dig heels in, Teddy, but it's a cringe -inator. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it funny. I tried to make it funny, but he got uh, old Kevin this week. Listen to this. He's bought this new gaff, so he's gone down to look at it with his bird. And his mates bought one on the same street who works at our place with his bird. So they've all gone down. Anyway, they only took wrong turning at the end of this lane because it's sat now, but they've only sunk into uh, this, like, swamp thing. <laughs> I couldn't get out. What, in the Range Rover? 
in a brand new Range Rover, oh, about a year old one, yeah, couldn't get out. Because then Range Rovers, mate, people think because it says four wheel driving them that you can go through anything in them. They're a load of shit. Honestly, oh. they couldn't they could budge to get a tractor to drag them out. So imagine <laughs> that. So I've been howling all week at it. <laughs> I like out like that, me, don't I? You know, other people's downfalls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially if they've got millions and they're having it stuck up them for, for once in a while. Because, you know, rich people, right? I've noticed rich people, everything falls into the lap, doesn't it? You know, if you've got a few quid, you just tend to like, there's no rules for you, is there? Anything is, everything's like, gets sorted quick, doesn't it? If you've got a well, few quid. So when they get stuck in mud, just like <laughs> Joe Bloggs does, I think that's good. It brings them down to earth. I've said what I thought. That's that. If they don't like it up there, F them. It's just how I feel. <laughs> There's such a British thing that we, 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 we live in a culture of envy, don't we? Like, if someone gave you a few mil, Porky Russ. Do you know what I mean? Like, they'd they'd be someone... They'd me to crash my car if they give me two mil. I hope he writes that uh, sports car off his boat, they'll be saying. Well, I'm not like that. I just hope they get, you know, bogged down in mud. And when they jump <laughs> out the car to sort it, they're a foot in muck, aren't they? In the trainers. Oh, I think all like that's brilliant, mate. It's character building, Terry. Well, no, nah, making money is character building. It's character building... Because you, you think about it. think about Kev, right? Think about the pressure that guy's got. He's got to keep people in employment. Yeah. Even though he's got even though he's got a few quid, he's got to keep people employed. He's got to keep you in your in your office over there. Yeah. yeah he's got to keep the the Porky's Corner thing popping. Yeah. You imagine how many how many things are spinning in his head at any given moment, mate. I oh, imagine it's quite stressful. Things. Of course, it's stressful, and oh, he's he's mainly stressed out. I think over horses. <laughs> Because you can get your head turned, you know, if you've got an horse now and they ring up, Saudis ring you up. They rung him up, they've took his horse out there, come second. What, to fight? No, they need the undercard. Hey, listen, what they do, they ring people up if you've got a racehorse. They come and pick it up from your stables. They put it on a special plane. They fly them out with all other horses. There's no entry fees. You know, like, to race here in the UK, it's three grand plus a race, you know, for colours and everything else entry in that. Yeah. There's none of that. Your horse finishes second, and then you you get um, thirty grand in your bank for finishing second. What's what, what's what's going on over there? You must have money to burn. So he'll have all that spinning round his head because there's money to be made in horse racing now. You know, over there because they haven't got expensive. any sports, have they? Really over there? Yeah, they're building everything from scratch. Everything from scratch. So yeah. So I dare say he's got a few things spinning in his head and then obviously me kicking doors down regarding Porky's Corner and invoices for paper clips. My my invoices for paper clips and staplers are like notes at cider horses and all that shit, are they? It's just seven grand for staplers. When I walk in, I say, well, I don't want to sit down to the staples. I've still got receipt here, two pound forty four and it had me paid into my bank. I want to sit down. Like, oh, God, he's here. I thought you were having a day off today, Russell. Now, while I'm here, I'm here for me £2.44. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, do you want to jump on to the other one? Yeah, go on then. What are we on here? Go on then. Go on to part two, yeah? All right. All right, all right. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. We'll see you on part two. We'll have to change that photo as well. Uh, can't keep putting Terry Harper up there with Steppy Bull logo tattoo on her bicep because she's had it lasered off. Because she was sick of people going up to her saying, oh, he ain't made you have a tattoo on your arm as well, has he? You know, it's a cult. He is a cult leader. Pop, pop, bang. <laughs>